Well, I used to live uh, on the ocean in Ventura because I was a big time surfer back then. And I bought a little eight inch Schmidt Castle grain for checking out the waves across the harbor and stuff. And one night I looked up and I saw this uh, yellow star up there and I go, I wonder what that is. So I took about half an hour to get it into the, into the telescope and I, I looked and oh my goodness, it was about the size of a BB, but it was the planet Saturn. And it was like that proverbial lightning bolt coming down hitting you. My God, I can't believe it, you know? Me, an amateur, can actually look and see Saturn. So for about a year, I was a visual astronomer. And then I got Sky and Telescope magazine, Astronomy magazine, and I owned a custom photo lab at the time. And I thought, well, you know, if these guys can take pictures like that, I sure can. So I, I went and got a, a camera and put it on the back of the telescope and aimed it up at, I think, the Andromeda Galaxy and exposed it for about, you know, two minutes, three minutes, no guiding, nothing. Went back down to the lab the next day to develop it, thinking there would be this beautiful picture there, and all I got was a bunch of squiggles. It was just the stars, that's all it recorded. I came to realize, boy, there's a lot more to this than, than, you know, than I ever realized. That really was the beginning of, of my astrophotography career, so to speak. When I shoot, I don't shoot just one picture. I shoot about anywhere from five to, to nine frames and I dither each one of those exposures, meaning I move the camera ever so slightly left, right, up, or down. That's how I get much higher signal to noise um, with uh, a, a camera like the EOS RA. You shoot long exposures, low ISO, and shoot anywhere from five to nine frames, and through software you combine them all together, average all the frames together, and boy, you're gonna have something that's just gonna knock your socks off. Previously, we had to shoot with lenses wide open to get as much light through them as possible onto the sensor because the sensors weren't really that good. Now that the sensors and the, and the processors and the cameras are so much better, we are able to shut our lenses down to like f4. If it's a 2.8 lens or an f2 lens, we can bring it all the way down to f4 and still expose for like three to five minutes and end up with fantastically better quality pictures because you're operating the lens at a much better aperture than wide open. And you now have beautiful pinpoint stars corner to corner and the vignetting has diminished substantially. When I tested the Canon EOS RA, my jaw literally hit the ground because there was no noise. The background was absolutely clean. When you go into the deep shadows, there's no color noise at all. It's nice to see that uh, with the Digic 8, Canon has really solved the problem of color noise in the deep shadows. It's the perfect camera for me. Uh, the form factor, the way it fits in my hand, the way uh, all the controls work with touch screen. This camera, the screen can go in any position you basically want it to. So if I'm pointing straight up at the sky, and I want to be able to read what I'm doing. It's all there and it's all very easy accessible. Plus, if you're trying to crop your picture, which is really difficult, you need to be able to see the screen without breaking your neck. Uh, that is worth its weight in gold right there because I've, been, I've gotten up early in the morning with other cameras that have a bunch of dials and buttons to push and this and that and the rest. I didn't get it, I made a mistake because I could not really see what I was doing. With EOS RA, you will see what you are doing every step of the way. I had the good chance of using the uh, RF 70-200 f2.8 and I found the lens to be fantastic because it has extremely sharp pinpoint stars and there was no false color uh, around any of the stars either which shows that, that that lens is truly apochromatic. It's a, it's a fantastic lens all around. When I switched from an SLR camera with a mirror that it typically would protect the sensor to a, a mirrorless camera, my, one of my greatest concerns was that the, uh, when you take the lens off, the sensor would lie there exposed to dust, to all kinds of stuff. And I was very pleasantly surprised to see that Canon solved this problem by having a curtain come down in front of the sensor anytime you turn the camera off. Another thing that's really unique about the RA is most cameras will only magnify what you see on the back screen up to like 10 power, 10x. 
the RA magnifies all the way up to 30x, which means that when you're looking at a star and you're focusing manually on a star, you can really see when you are in focus or you're not in focus. In fact, if your lens has a slight amount of chromatic aberration, you can actually see the chromatic aberration go in and out from red on one side to you know green on the other, and you can bring that star right in between the aberrations so you have absolutely perfect focus without the aberrations showing up. It allows you to pinpoint that focus better than any other camera that I've ever seen. Some cameras, you buy them and you just have them as a tool, but with this camera, I'm so excited about it, I actually look forward to my next opportunities to be able to use it, especially for astrophotography. And I would recommend this camera to anybody who has ever wanted to image the night sky. This camera has this built in, it will take in the hydrogen alpha and you'll end up with a beautiful looking Milky Way rather than just a green one. This camera excites me to the extent that I actually want to go out and shoot with it uh, almost on a daily basis because it, it produces such great results.